Hey mate, it's a year since that happened. What happened to you on the first day? Remember that? I do, very clearly. For me personally, after a sleepless night in the van, rocking and rolling, wind, yeah. howling gales and driving rain, I decided to uh, get up, come into the office, get a cup of coffee, have a bite to eat. That was about 6.30 a.m. Yeah. Well, I got a tip off about a, uh, a series of evacuations and rescues on Lynx Road near Taradale. So I, uh, I thought, right, I'll give that a chase. I got me wet weather gear on because at that point it was still blowing a gale and, and rain. Was it ever? Boy. It was. So I, uh, I made my way down through Hastings, got onto William Street, and that's the first time I saw any surface flooding. I saw these fellas up to their elbows. Oh, yeah. Digging, digging leaves out of the drains to let the water get away. And I thought, right. That's a picture, that's a guaranteed picture. If everything else goes pear-shaped, I've got a picture. Got to Link's Road, drove down to the chocolate factory, and this was a scene that I came across. That is because amazing. I'm, I'm looking up towards Korakipo Road there, and there's a car slap bang in the middle of where the road should have been. There's a vineyard that sort of dips down. Yeah. Couldn't see that at all, so I jumped out of the car real quick, got a quick photograph of that before the car got swept away. And then I'm looking around, and uh, then I saw I saw these guys coming in, in an IRB. I'm like, what? I, that, that's a that's a that's a vineyard. Why is the IRB on a vineyard? So I got out of the car, got a few more shots again. It was driving rain, so I'm trying to keep the gear dry and blowing a gale. So the, the camera's moving about all over the place. The guys in the IRBs and the, yep. the other rescuers and helpers, man, they were heroes, absolute heroes. They just got on with the job. Got so many people to safety. Just bizarre looking back at these photographs that that everybody got out okay. So how did you feel while you were taking these shots? Initially nervous mm. because you you know you you're photographing people yeah in quite a vulnerable state but kind of excited you know it's part of history it's what we live for is isn't it? it yeah exactly yeah. you go from yeah. you go from a quiet day to wow and so while you were doing that I was on my way to Tiawonga I checked out Tiawonga and that was uh, not too bad so I thought Pakafai Road would be the way to go I went down there uh, the flooding was minimal. And then I decided just to get across the bridge as fast as I could, just in case something happened. Um, and luckily enough, I did. So while you were there at the Silky Oak um, Chocolate Factory, I would have been across the bridge. And I was on the on the stop bank talking to a few people, and I was chatting to the... That's insane. Yeah. Okay, the water <laughs> it was, there. was so high. Yeah. I was chatting to a cop who was uh, who was there at the scene. He was just watching the bridge. Uh, the water was up so high, and, and there were trees and they were bashing the bridge and uh, we thought it was going to go any anytime soon. Um, and also the water level on the stop bank, was, it was only sort of centimetres below. From breaching. And from breaching and going over and we thought that would go too. Um, someone said that there was flooding in the back of Teradol, head out, headed out that way. And taking the boogie boards in the water. And taking the boogie boards in the water, yeah. I went the, round never, the back, an opportunity. got through to the EIT through um, a guy's um, backyard and um, yeah. Photograph some guys who were loving the water at EIT. Nice. Did a little bit of surfing and boogie boarding. They were just Good going on. mental. At that time, you would have been almost on your way across the bridge too, were you? Well, we, we got the call to get off Links Road quick. So we get, got in the cars, drove down Links Road, and, and bearing in mind probably 45 minutes an hour earlier, I'd, I'd come through Pakify and, and across the roundabout there onto Links Road. Driving back down to Links Road, I couldn't believe my eyes. It's like... Where am I going? There's no, there's no roundabout. Where is it? <laughs> it was underwater. The yeah, that's bizarre. Underwater. That's bizarre. And, and you could see a raging torrent coming down Pakify Road. Yeah. Police officer at the side of me said, "Mate, he says we ain't going to get his car through there." Yeah. And I says, yeah. "Damn right. What we're going to do?" He says, "Leave him." So we can, we kind of parked his cars on the highest bit of ground on Links Road that we could find, and we just, luckily there was a truck. Yeah. A big, big old truck coming down the road, and I don't know did it is. So they just said, "Mate." Jump, jump on, on it, everybody yeah. jump on, there's a few life jackets. Yeah, so we all great. scrambled to get on the truck. And so between me getting over the bridge and you it won't be coming here, it, it was flooded. Pack yeah, fire yeah. must have been it flooded. Was, it was raging down here over the fields. People tried to make phone calls. I'd lost communications 20 minutes, half an hour earlier. Yeah. So I had nothing. This lad on his phone, he's trying to get a message through. I think he was getting bits through, but not a lot. Yeah. We got to the Tutai Kodi River Bridge to come over. And that is what we were faced with. One cop on the Hastings side of the bridge, and he said, listen, I cannot tell you to cross that bridge because we've got bridges that have already gone. Yeah. He said, this one could go at any moment. He said, but also, I can't tell you to stay here because if that stop bank goes, 
we're all done yeah. anyway. It's just, you, you, you pay take, your your take your choice. Yes. Yeah. I think nerves were kicking in a little bit, and I thought, that's a heavy truck. That is a heavy truck. Going over truck. a, yep. a possibly compromised bridge. <laughs> So I took the decision to get off using the excuse that I wanted to photograph well, the truck. That's a valid the excuse. It's a good excuse, but it, it was self-preservation. That's Booker Tea Tree Hill. That's Booker Tea Tree Hill. So, and, pe um, so people were evacuating out yeah, of Tarradale to get yeah. up the hill. Yeah, most people in Tarradale we were evacuated. Crazy. Crazy days, mate. And so that was us for the next few days, wasn't it? Well, a couple yeah, of weeks. We yeah. carried on, moved on through Esk Valley and um, Mahu, Pukitap. Fanaki, whatever, really. Yeah. Just down at Tiawa, the evacuations down there, Marainui. Yeah. Uh, more evacuation in Tarradale. Yeah, was, it kicked off big time, didn't it? Yeah, that was one out of the box. How does it make you feel for the future if you get the... Uh, because at the start of it, when we were thinking about it, you know, yeah. the pre-cyclone planning yeah. a few days prior, we were both... I, I know I was thinking, oh, here we go again. <laughs> so was I. Another possible fizzy, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and all these preparations. The editor said to us, right, are you all prepared? And we said, well, we need some gumboats. So we went, we went to uh, warehouse, and bought two pair of gumboots. That's right, I remember. Hey, yeah, that is that is well prepared. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think in in future, take a cyclone warning with more seriousness. More seriousness I think. Yeah, yeah, I think sure. I think so. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, it's uh, bound to happen again, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt.